What's up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. Today I thought it'd be cool to go over a tool pat on the brake rotor I recently did. And that was when I took the CNGA tool and I did both the OD of the part and the ID with the same tool. So I wanted to go over that tool path in Mastercam and show you what I did to keep that tool from crashing when it switches angles from doing OD work to ID work. This toolpath is very basic. All it is, is I've got a face pass and two finish passes. So any old lathe can do that. What makes this toolpath cool is that the 9-axis machine has an upper spindle, which can rotate the tool in different directions, and I can also move the head at different angles. So when I program lathe operations with this tool, I actually have to specify a tool angle in Mastercam. So for most of my OD tool paths, I set that head to 90 degrees to make it go straight down. And then I also have to give it a tool orientation depending on how I put that tool in the machine and how I touched it off. So that tool, I have it rotate 180 degrees and lock into position. So when this tool gets called up, it's gonna rotate and lock to a position to where it can do OD work on the first spindle. I've got the face and the OD path both using that same angle and the same rotation. So when I post both of those paths together, there's no problem because they're both at the same angle. But what if I wanted to use that same tool to do ID work? In this case, the ID is big enough to where I can fit that tool inside of the ID of my parts. So it would save me a tool, it would save some runtime, and I know that that tool would be running true to the other two tools that ran before it because it's all the same tool. Not to say that my SMX would be off, but that is something you have to worry about on a lathe, making sure that all your tools are touched off to the same spot and they're all running together. So for the ID pass, I have that same exact tool, but for the tool angle, I have it rotated 180 degrees, just like the other one, but the tool angle is at zero. So this tool is gonna to go at a zero degree angle, which is straight, just like a boring bar. Now that's really easy, and all that was was changing a few numbers on your tool angle, which is kind of basic nine axis stuff. But when you're using the same tool in sequence, watch what happens if I generate this tool path, just how I have it right now, and I have a collision when I simulate this, because it wants to go straight down to the ID position and start working right from where it left off on the OD pass. Now you can fix that easily by doing a manual path by posting your program and then changing the last Z move before it does that rotation and adding a few safety lines so that it gets out of the way to a safe area to where it could rotate. Or you could go to the finish pass and just click this force tool change button for the ID path. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna back my tool off as soon as it's done with the OD pass and go back home and act like it was gonna do a tool change. But immediately afterwards, it's gonna rotate the tool and start the next tool path. So that way you don't have to worry about any clearances. And when I click this and I reload all three of these operations, you can see we no longer have a collision anymore. And now the same tool can do the OD work and it can do the ID work. I really like doing that kind of tool path. It's something that you can only really do on a nine axis lathe. And if you watch our video, you can see that I use that same tool path on both the first side and the second side. It just saved me from using a finished ID boring bar. One less tool to think about. And it's one of the fun things about a nine axis machine, thinking about ways you can use that upper spindle that you can't normally do on a regular lathe. So that's really all there was to it. You just change your tool angles and make sure that box to force the tool change is active on the tool that switches the angle. There are times where you have to mount tools in different ways on a regular lathe. You might have to have more than one depending on how many different angles you wanna hit and you have to touch them all off in different ways. On the SMX, you just set that tool up one way and you let the upper spindle handle it and handle all the calculations when it switches angles and you're able to use that upper spindle 
to do different kinds of operations with one tool. And this is just one example of this kind of tool path. It was just on my head since we recently did that brake rotor video. But you can use this kind of tool path to do OD grooves at different angles. Or if you have undercuts on your part, you know, finish your part at one angle and then rotate the tool and hit an angle that the other cuts couldn't do. The possibilities are really endless on a 9 axis machine. And as you saw in this video, Mastercam made it very easy to switch tool angles on this tool and to switch the rotation of the head if I need to. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, you like what we're about and you like what we're doing, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.